Hello YouTube! So, we are aboard our friend's 40 foot lagoon catamaran named Boundless. We are bringing it from Annapolis to Florida. Uh, we were already a couple days in. Um, we had our friends on board, so we didn't do any filming, but I will regale you with tales of that adventure um, in a little bit. But uh, for the moment, um, this is our first day, just the two of us, and we just left Waterside Marina in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, but we noticed uh, somewhere along the way down from Annapolis to Norfolk, we picked up a crab pot in the rudder. Um, so now I have to dive down and cut it off. That. Well, this isn't my knife, but it's going to work. That being said, it's like 64, 65 degrees out. Oh no, sorry, the water temperature, 62.2 degrees. The air temperature, 45, 46. I hate the cold. So, I am sitting here in this wetsuit. Luckily I brought that, and I'm warming up. I'm getting a good little sweat going, uh, a couple bottles of hot water, and I'm then going to dump um, dump into my wetsuit. Got booties, gloves, snorkel, mask, knife. And I'm going to go cut this crab pot line off of our port rudder. And I am not thrilled about this, but it's got to be done. The ladder's broke. What? Oh no. <gasps> oh. Try this again. It's more about nerves than just anything else. I'm going on a cold one, really. It was on a through hole. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank God, I didn't have to die. Oh, oh that's a beautiful thing. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go for a swim. I'll be back. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's freaking cold. Oh. Oh my God, it's so much suction. Ah, oh, there's a trophy. Okay. Can we go now? Yes. Okay. That's our, uh, that's our first bridge to the ICW. Beltline Railroad Lift Bridge. Anyway, we're gonna have a whole ton of them on this trip, but our going under bridges never gets old. Oh, we are sitting in front of. Hold on. Gilmer. 
Overton Lift Bridge. Uh, it's our first bridge that needs a signal to open. Um, and that would be great and all, except they're not opening yet. So we, okay, we had to get the crab pot line off the, bow, off the bottom of the boat. And we were timing that with the time it would take us to get here to this bridge, which opens at 8.30. Um, then they start lifting. You know, they stay closed in the morning for morning traffic, make sure people get to work on time and stuff like that. Anyway, so we got here at 8.40 and it's closed and I tried hailing them and nobody answered and then I realized there's all these other boats here in the basin waiting as well. Um, so finally somebody came on a little before 9 and says that they are staying closed because they're waiting on a train that's coming out of the station and then once that comes through then they'll open up. So what that does is that's coordinating with like the next bridge which is a railroad bridge. So they don't want to let all these boats through just to be caught on the next bridge. So they keep it closed. Um, and I just heard the train. So once that once that train passes and that railroad bridge opens up, then they'll open the Gilberton lift bridge and stop all the traffic. Um, then we'll be able to move on. So we've been sitting here for like 45 minutes or something. Anyway, just hanging out, motoring back and forth, staying in place, doing our thing. That's the update for now. So.
The Alligator River, Hungo River Canal connects the two. Uh, there, now you can see me, but now I can't see. Uh, and this is terrifying. Uh, I mean, it's not very wide. Uh, so yeah, we're on the boat, right there. Stumps. We actually just passed. Um, that. That's a boat called Naughty Girl, and she was actually stuck on a stump on the side, and we were just stopping to try and figure out how to help her out, and uh, uh, she got free. But this is terrifying, and it's uh, a hair over 19 miles, this entire canal. But... Not the place you want to get stuck. shallow inlet. Uh, it's a Lockwood's Folly Inlet. Comes right, you know, the Atlantic dumps right in here so it washes up a lot of sand, a lot of shoaling here. And we got radio from some of our anchor buddies last night. Uh, YOLO, Salt Pondering, and Road Home. And they were like, hey, we went through there at low tide and we hit ground. Um, and we didn't even leave the bay for a couple hours after they did for fear of not being able to get out of our bay because the channel's real narrow or real skinny, and it was. Um, yeah, it was very skinny. We only had a little over a foot, foot and a half below our keel getting out, and we waited several hours. Um, so we're about to hit this spot of potentially very low depths, um, and he said stay 20 feet to the left of the green buoy, so that's what we're gonna do now, and we'll see what happens. Now they went through here at one foot, so we're two and a half more feet up, so we should be fine. But just in case. Oh, look what they did. Are they stuck? No, they're not stuck. They're not stuck, oh, but that's the way the green goes. That's why I was like, stay 20 feet over from the green. He meant, he meant not, not this one, but, but the one over here. Why do they look stopped? They're taking the... Uh, no, nope, they're moving. But they were clearly stopped for a second. Boats in the Lockwoods Folly Inlet. Y'all having trouble with the depths? Yeah, the, uh, at that last green, uh, it's down our about seven, less than seven feet, about six six. Okay, got it. We'll uh, swing wide of it. Uh, no, you want to be near the last green, and I would even wonder if you couldn't get on the other side of it. It might be deeper. You might want to really cut it close onto it. What's your depth? My depth here is 17. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your draft? Four plus. Okay, got it. Thank you.
we're gonna we're gonna stay just right of it. I don't want to cut off that marker's there for a reason. I'll move over. Well, I think that's what he meant. Stay close. Shit, we're only 20 feet wide. Uh, you know what I mean? But that's like 20 feet off. So he was, that's why he was saying stay 20 feet to the left of that. Okay, okay. I think. Because he did say stay 20, 20 feet off your port side. Yep. Controller, so, I'm probably not going to pass you because I'm going to switch that to one engine. Okay. Go oh. ten feet, nine feet. Sheriff, I saw hailing out to the Coast Guard. There's a U.S. Coast Guard sector, North Carolina. Over. Yeah. Nothing heard. U.S. Coast Guard, standing by channel one. Yeah, they went wide, so we're not seven. Seven. Feet. been like uh, a lot of the way since Beaufort. Anytime you hit one of these inlets, like the Atlantic's right out there, you have all this stuff washing in and it really messes up the depths through there. We, we actually bumped one, but that's because I kind of, I went too far to the left. I made a bad decision and uh, we had to re reverse off of it. Um, but what's the same? There's two kinds, of sailors. two kinds of sailors, those that have run aground and those that lie about it something like that. Anyway, headed to North Myrtle Beach. This Myrtle Beach, right? Yeah, North Myrtle Beach.
them anchor point, point roughly where we dropped. We got about 110 feet of line out. This is where we were when the tide was coming the one direction. Now the tide is coming the opposite direction. It's coming from that way. But we have tide, this blue arrow in the center, coming this way at 0.8 knots. And we have wind coming exactly opposite of it. So since it's basically like a slack tide right now, because um, that's not very strong, although it's getting stronger, uh, it's fighting for control of the boat. And the boat's doing all this wiggling out here, trying to figure out what it wants to do. So I can't relax until it settles down and pins one way, like it did here. Uh, most likely, oh, I just moved my marker. Um, most likely, it's going to end up, you know, sitting over here somewhere once the tide changes, but just waiting. Good morning. Heck of a night's sleep last night. The, uh, Anytime the tide would uh, be going out, the bow would be into the current, but the wind was pushing the boat forward, so the anchor line, anyway, it was a mess. As soon as the tide would switch, everything would be perfect. Um, this is our anchor hook, and uh, it actually bent this pin in the middle of the night. Um, almost couldn't get it off. I'd get pliers and squeeze it. Um, sort of just twisting, twisting, twisting. Um, anyway, all that's over with, except I gotta get a new one of these, a better one of these, without this flimsy little pen. Um, but, uh, ignore that. But, uh, we're headed to Charleston now. We'll be there in just a little while. So. Hopefully it doesn't rain all crazy and be all nasty. I'm half asleep. You may notice I look a little stressed in that last video. Well, uh, this is about the time where Hurricane Etta was coming through, came up through the Gulf and come through the Carolinas. And we were having trouble finding a marina uh, where we could uh, tie up and be safe. It, uh, everybody's heading south, you know, because it's wintertime, and uh, all the marinas were crowded because people were scared about this storm. Um, this is also about the time I got a call from my mom, and my grandmother, uh, who I have always called Moma, uh, and Moma actually comes from the German word Oma. I was born in Germany on an Air Force base, and... Uh, I couldn't say Oma, I called her Moma, and it always stuck. So, um, it was about this time I got a call from my mom that Moma passed away after a, um, a hard year, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, uh, downhill, very hard downhill year. And, uh, yeah, it took it really hard. I mean, as to be expected, but... Uh, so now we have the stress of uh, trying to get this boat somewhere safe and uh, get tied up, figure out a flight home, uh, a whole bunch of stuff just piling in at once. And that last video was actually, uh, uh, I think, in the midst of all that. So, um, you know, I didn't really film much more. Uh, everything did work out, though. Uh, we, we, <laughs> we actually couldn't get a slip. We had to get a finger pier with no power, no um, uh, water uh, at a marina on the east side across from Charleston. And uh, what we did get tied up, we were safe. And we did get flights home. And we did uh, make it home for my uh, grandmother's funeral. Um, then a couple days later, we flew back and continued the journey. Um, continued the journey, but I didn't film. Uh, I mean, I do have some pictures, which I'm sure that's what I'm showing you here. And, um, I mean, we had a really, really, really amazing trip. Uh, it's, you know, that's how it goes. That's life. And, you know, the, the coolest part is, you know, now my grandma got to watch She actually got to see the rest of the trip. 
And I know how happy and how proud of us she is.